grant them removed, and grant that this your noise hath chid down all the majesty of England. Imagine that you see the wretched strangers, their babies at their backs, with their poor luggage plodding to the ports and coasts for transportation, and that you sit as kings in your desires, authority quite silenced by your brawl, and you in rough of your opinions clothed. What had you got? I'll tell you. You had taught how insolence and strong hand should prevail, how order should be quelled. And by this pattern, not one of you should live an aged man, for other ruffians, as their fancies wrought, with self-same hand, self-reason and self-right, would shark on you, and men like ravenous fishes feed on one another. Oh, desperate as you are, wash your foul minds with tears, and those same hands that you like rebels lift against the peace, lift up for peace. And your unreverent knees make them your feet to kneel to be forgiven. You'll put down strangers, kill them, cut their throats, and lead the majesty of law in lion to slip him like a hound. Say now, the king, as he is clement, if the offender mourn, should so much come too short of your great trespass as but to banish you. Whither would you go? What country, by the nature of your error, should give you harbour? Go you to France, or Flanders, to any German province, Spain, or Portugal, nay, anywhere that not adheres to England? Why, you must needs be strangers. Would you be pleased to find a nation of such barbarous temper that breaking out in hideous violence would not afford you an abode on earth? Whet their detested knives against your throat. Spurn you like dogs, and like as if that God owned not nor made not you, nor that the elements were not all appropriate to your comfort, but chartered unto them. What would you think to be thus used? This is the stranger's case, and this your mountainish inhumanity. <laughs>